nor ye durable riches and righteousness they that love me and seek me early will find me acts chapter 13 we're still building on this acts chapter 13 from verse 21 to 23 another man carves out a title for himself although at a level playing ground we are all children of god or we are all creations of god we now see another man who went out of his way and afterwards peter is speaking now they desired a king and god gave unto them saul the son of kish a man of the tribe of benjamin by the space of 40 years next verse and when he had removed him he raised up unto them read with me david to be their king uh-huh to whom also he gave testimony stop who testified god god is about to give a testimony that i have found david the son of jesse help me a man after my own heart what qualifies him to be a man after my own heart his insistence to see that my will is always fulfilled now notice how these people end their titles most times we just know their titles but i'm showing you what they did how they went far when it has to do with the friend of god he's saying you have done something to me that forbids me from hiding things from you i give you access to knowledge as proof of friendship when it now has to do with a man after his heart he's saying i have discerned that this man will die doing my will and i have given him i've given him a title of a man after my own heart god is testifying not a prophet a man who pursues my heart not who pursues the throne don't forget the man is a king and yet god does not talk about his throne he will abandon his throne to seek the heart of god and god says this man is a man after my heart why because of his insistence to see that my will is being done next verse of this man's seed have God of this man's seed that God according to his promise raised up unto Israel a savior Jesus this is his reward for being a man after God's heart God insisted that your seed must participate in the lineage that will bring David was not the only man after the order of you know God and all of that but he is he is called the seed of David thou son of david not thou son of rahab not thou son of boaz not thou son of naomi they all played their roles but out of those people god selected one man to become to personify his passion towards a man are you learning something tonight a man after my heart a friend of god this is a very powerful revelation now let me share with you something very very powerful um and, and and this is where i think and i believe that many believers are not properly mentored and as we go on break it's important to remind and re-emphasize this that in the dealings of god man will always have a role to play in actualizing prophecy please listen carefully that the systems of god work twofold one the dimensions that are finished from god's standpoint and then number two through the experience of alignment and obedience we make manifest that which has been finished in our lives philippians chapter 2 and verse 12 Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. It says, Wherefore, Paul is admonishing the church in Philippi, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, hear what he says, work out your own, not your neighbor not your child not your wife not your husband walk out your own salvation and give it a level of diligence with fear 
and trembling work out your own prosperity work out your own intimacy with the holy spirit work out your own ensure that you press into god so much that he's forced to find a name for you he calls abraham a friend of god he calls jacob the one he names it after a generation of intimacy and he's saying listen you have a responsibility to press until until you give him no rest the bible says until he establishes jerusalem there is a way you can wear god out if i can use that word through your passion and your intimacy intimacy he will brand his relationship with you and give it a name that defines his unique attention towards you work out your own salvation you will read about prosperity and never enter into it you will read about divine health and never enter into it now listen because this is a serious problem with africa the awareness of things like the finished work of christ which is true has when not properly balanced has provided a platform for a lot of irresponsibilities in believers and the ability to sustain the fortitude to press as an act of faith it's not there so we have people who just sit down and want everybody pray for me be wealthy for me be prosperous for me and that fortitude that participatory effort is not there are we together now so many people want to know the holy spirit and they think the key to knowing the holy spirit is to receive an impartation from a man who knows the holy spirit what you are going to receive from that impartation is a ladder a ladder that you will climb hello a ladder that you what climb. you will climb it through your prayer you will climb it through your relationship you will climb it through the sacrifice of the instructions god will give you that is not for everybody it's for only you you are about to eat and god says turn the plate upside down you are fasting for one week he said god is it for everybody say no it's for only you he said god why me i mean scripture he says i thought you want a name a name that defines the extent of my intimacy with you this is the pathway that leads to such a possibility now there are rewards when you contend that much because you will i mean in physically now we have what we call regular treatment of guests whether in hotels airports whatever we have what is called priority treatment now the nigerian government does not allow favoritism but the various sacrifices of people have forced to have a lounge a business lounge a general place where people sit down all those things are not favoritisms they are a way of rewarding the contribution of those people to nation building so in as much as there is a level playing ground there is something you and god can do that makes it unfair fair for god to generalize his dealings with you that from that time is a covenant you create that makes it impossible for god to deal with you the way he deals with everyone this is true it's a very powerful mystery that i show you work out your own salvation thou shall remember the lord thy god it is he that gives you the power to get well a lot of believers start jumping in the name of jesus i will never be poor you are getting poor you are seeing it god is your poverty is a report card god is telling you you are missing something i will never be poor i'm not being sarcastic and you find out that a lot of people and then here and there we just browse through the laws okay what and what should i know okay tithing giving i should do business i should do this and then you just do one or two things and find out that nothing changes and at a point you just say kai this nigeria yourself man must work and you know all of this we find obvious excuses and then things never change but there are people who will will you will see them burn the candle in the days of my youth when the secrets of the lord was upon my tabernacle when his light shined upon my head there is a light that shines upon your head there is the one that shines upon your feet the one that shines upon your head gives you illumination it says there is a spirit in man if you only have the light that shines on your feet you will keep walking but let me tell you the truth you will need the one that grants you access to knowledge are, are you getting what i'm teaching you now yes hmm. work out your own salvation any ministry that grows is worked at 
You know, a lot of people sometimes, respectfully, people see me and say, wow, Apostle God is doing mighty things in your life. And I say, yes, he is, and I, I really thank him. And they, ah, you are anointed, though. And, you know, sometimes I'm tempted to say, I, I hear you are carrying the anointing of the generals. And I'm tempted to say, are they my relatives? <laughs> How did that happen? You see, this, this is the question we need to ask. Ah, God has favored you. God has favored Koinonia. My brothers and my sisters, behind everything that works is somebody working it. Working it with diligence. Working it with passion. Working it with zest. Behind every business that works, it is favor. Every house is built by some man, but God is still the builder. It's a mystery. This issue of being a worker this language walk believers don't like it the men the moment you mention walk people don't ah, why must i walk oh dear genesis chapter 2 after god creates man and woman he now comes to take clay god the creator who speaks and creates used his hand not his mouth alone when you read chapter 1 alone you are deceived because that's where he spoke and created it in the realm of the spirit you must go to chapter 2 and see god the walker not just god the speaker it takes more than speaking to build a destiny your hands must be soiled you will put your hands down and make it happen there are people around just looking for impartation looking for cheap prophecy and there is a place for those things but it is only activated whilst you walk whilst you walk hallelujah many people are going to remain poor it's not it's not a negative prophecy and my heart pains me while i say this many people are going to remain mediocre in their life many people may never sustain the level of influence and grace that it takes to birth the purposes of god generationally and it is not necessarily because god decided to use others it is your individual commitment elisha was never supposed to be a prophet elisha was a farmer but he followed Elijah and said I don't care what you are going to do with me oh I must carry so they were already sons of the prophet the next prophet should come out of them but someone said I need I, I, I can't die farming I started farming but I will follow you until something comes upon my life we define our realities by the unashamedness to pursue the keys of the kingdom until something comes from heaven to your life I will never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life will change. I will never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life will change. I will never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life. I, I, finances with fear and trembling man of god sit down work out your ministry work out your sermons don't just wait for an impartation that will teach you verses open your bible mark them write them down when others are sleeping wake up there is the labor dimension of greatness no impartation will replace it you don't sit down and casually fast yourself the way you like into uncommon anointings. You are joking. You pray once in a while, when you want, one hour per year, two hours per year. No. Buy the books. Read your way to excellence. Use your diligence to create a space for yourself in destiny. My life will change. Eh? My life must change. My life will change. Eh? My life will change. 
I will never be the same. I've touched his grace. My life must change. I will never be the same. My life will change. My life will change. My life must change. My life will change.